Hi, welcome to this example on solving trig equations. Now in this example, we're asked to solve 2 divided by tan squared theta plus 8 equals 7 cosec theta. And we've got to solve it for theta, which is in radians, and it's between naught and pi radians inclusive. So how do I solve an equation like this? What do I notice? Well, first of all, it's in the same angle, which is good, but it's in different trig functions, tan theta and cosec theta. So I'd be kind of looking to see if I can get it into the same trig function. Now, we should know that 1 divided by tan squared theta, I know this is 2 divided by tan squared theta, but we can think of it as 2 multiplied by 1 over tan squared theta. 1 over tan squared theta is cot squared theta. And you should know an identity that picks up on this connection between cot and cosec. What it is, is that 1 plus cot squared theta is identical to cosec squared theta. So therefore, if I change this term to 2 multiplied by cot squared theta, and then we've got the plus 8 equals 7 cosec theta, by replacing the cot squared theta, which I can make the subject here, in terms of cosec squared theta, I'll be able to create an equation all in one trig function. And that trig function will be cosec theta. Look, I'll show you. From here, we make cot squared theta the subject. So cot squared theta would be identical to cosec squared theta minus 1. So I can put this in place of this term. So we therefore have 2 bracket cosec squared theta minus 1. And then we've got the plus 8 equals the 7 cosec theta. All I need to do now is to expand the bracket so we get 2 cosec squared theta minus 2 here and then the plus 8 equals 7 cosec theta. And I have a quadratic equation in cosec theta. But I need to rearrange it in order to be able to solve it. I need to rearrange it in the appropriate form, and that is to have the square term first of all. Then I'm going to subtract 7 cosec theta from both sides, so that's 7 cosec theta there. And then I've got minus 2 plus 8, which is 6. And then that leaves me with that equaling 0. So there's our quadratic equation in the right format. And I would try to see if I could factorize this. And indeed, this one does factorize. Let's just show you. 2 cosec squared theta. I could have 2 cosec theta here and a cosec theta there. That will multiply together to give 2 cosec squared theta. Look for two numbers that multiply together to give plus 6. What's that going to be? Minus 3 and minus 2. And if I put minus 3 there and minus 2 there, you can see that I get minus 4 cosec theta minus another 3 cosec theta, which is minus 7 cosec theta. And then minus 3 times minus 2 is plus 6. So there we go. Now that it's factorized, I can say that each of those factors equals 0. So we've got the first factor equaling 0, or the second factor equals 0. Cosec theta minus 2 equals 0. And if I rearrange this for cosec theta by adding 3 to both sides and dividing by 2, I get cosec theta equals 3 over 2. And for this one, if I add 2 to both sides, I get cosec theta equals 2. Now, if we start with this one, oh, by the way, what I want to say was that 
If you had your quadratic equation here, you could have solved it as well, not only by factorizing, but by the quadratic formula. This time it would have been cosec theta equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Hopefully you're familiar with that. Where a would have been 2, b would have been minus 7, and c would have been the plus 6. If you use that formula, put in those values, you should have come out to these two answers. All right? Anyway, what we'll do now is we'll tackle each one of these separately. So we'll come down here and say when cosec theta equals 3 over 2. Now when cosec theta equals 3 over 2, cosec is 1 over sine theta. So we've therefore got 1 over sine theta equals 3 over 2. And if I scroll this up, okay, we'll just give us a bit more room. We've got 1 over sine theta equals 3 over 2. And then if I rearrange this, I will get sine theta equals 2 thirds. I can inverse sine both sides. So theta equals the inverse sine of 2 thirds. And at this point, draw a quadrant diagram to search out all the results that we need. And we only need results from 0 to pi this time. So pi is over here. OK, so we're looking for where sine is positive, plus 2 thirds. Positive for sine will be in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So just mark in those two like so. We want that one and we mark that one in as being the same to the horizontal. Mark in the angles we want. We want that one, theta. And starting from here again, turn all the way around to the blue line here. That's another possible theta. Get on the calculator now. Remember you should be in radians mode. Inverse sine 2 thirds. And you should find that you get 0.729 and so on radians. So I'm going to mark with that with a C there. Or you could write the word radians in, or rads for short. What does this mean in this diagram? Well, it means that this angle here is 0.729 and so on radians. And that means that this little blue angle in here is also that size. So that can help us get the green angle, because all we need to do is do pi for half a turn minus 0.729. And if you do that, you should find you get 2.411 and so on radians. All right, next let's tackle this one, cosec theta equals 2. So we'll start down here. We'll say that when cosec theta equals 2, that means that 1 over sine theta equals 2. And if I rearrange that for sine theta, we end up with sine theta equaling a half. So we'll just move that up again and leave that result on there. We'll just that's it, we'll just bring it to about there. So if sine theta equals a half, inverse sine both sides, we have theta equals the inverse sine of a half. Draw the quadrant diagram again, usual way. Sine is positive in the first quadrant, second quadrant. Mark in the two angles that are the same there. Mark in the angle theta that we want, that one, and all the way around to there. Use your calculator to work out what the inverse sine of a half is. This is, as I say, is a well-known one, actually. Inverse sine of a half in degrees is 30 degrees. And 30 degrees in radians is pi upon 6. If you've got a calculator, though, that does work in exact format, when you inverse sign this, you'll find that it will come up with pi upon 6. If it doesn't come up with pi upon 6, you might get the decimal equivalent of pi upon 6, which is 0.5235 odd radians. That would be the same as that angle over there. So 
Working on pi upon 6 though, we've got pi round to there, minus pi upon 6, gives you 5 pi upon 6 as the green angle. All right? But if you worked in decimals, you'd find that the green angle turned out to be 2.617 and so on radians. All right? But I prefer this particular version, the exact version. So if we put all the angles now in order of size, start, we would start with theta equaling the smallest, which is pi upon 6 radians. The next one would be this one up here, which will round, say, to one decimal place. That would be 0.7 radians to 1 dp. Then we would have the other angle up here, 2.4. That's also going to be rounded to one decimal place, 2.4 radians. And finally, the exact angle here, 5 pi over 6 radians. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to follow that and be able to model similar questions on that idea.